we are having a conversation on a strategic framework for how to increase Pakistan's export to US dollar 60 billion by 2030. In the last few weeks, I have presented to you an uh, infographic uh, containing the strategic framework. Uh, then I have made a couple of audio presentations to explain the context of this strategy. And finally, in the last week, I have uploaded a presentation explaining the strategic framework itself. In this video, uh, I'll present to you three or four big challenges that uh, the implementation of the strategy could face. Uh, or in other words, I'm going to present to you the critical success factors of this strategy when it goes into its implementation phase. The first critical success factor, in my view, is that of coordination and cooperation. Uh, when you look at this program, uh, you'll see that uh, there are several ministries at the federal level and there are several other ministries at the provincial levels uh, which will be involved uh, to make this strategic framework work. So uh, in order for these things to be uh, done properly, uh, I think cooperation and coordination will be very important. And one of the ways to ensure that is by uh, having an involvement and the ownership at the top post level. The second critical success factor is that of putting the private sector at the center of this program uh, because the idea is to build the capacities within the private sector of Pakistan uh, so they can export better. Uh, so it is important uh, for government to be, make sure that it is the private sector uh, which, is, which is really driving this program which is at the center of it. Uh, government has a tendency to uh, start looking things from their convenience and, and in their way of thinking. And this is something which will not work. Uh, for this program to be successful, the private sector must stay at the center of this program. The third critical success factor in my view uh, is that of uh, recruiting and retaining a good project management team. Uh, in Pakistan, where there is a dearth of good human resource, uh, even sometimes the donor organizations and the international uh, organizations find it hard uh, to retain, uh, first of all find and then to retain uh, good human resources. Uh, these are the organizations which provide or offer better package to their staff, they, they take care of them, they provide them with a better working environment. In comparison to that, I think government will struggle a little bit uh, not only to find good human resource but also uh, to retain it. Uh, and one of the ways around it, uh, one of the possible ways is to uh, outsource the HR and the operation component of the program. The fourth critical success factor in my view is that of ensuring the continuity of this program. Uh, I've seen several times in my experience where a program was just simply uh, dropped uh, because there was a shift at the level of the ministry uh, or at the, at the top bureaucracy. Uh, you know, simply a good program which was conceived in the previous setup was uh, dropped and not continued. Uh, this kind of program can take its time uh, to start delivering the results and therefore any shift at the top level uh, should not result in discontinuity of a program of this uh, importance. So these were the factors uh, which in my view are the most critical uh, in success of this program when it goes into its implementation. Uh, if you talk to a different expert, they may come up with a separate set of uh, critical factors for the success. Uh, but this, this is my list. Uh, do comment uh, in the space given below to let me know what you think of it. Thank you.